There she is. All right. Hi. You might need, there it is. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lisa. It's so good to actually see your face. So good to see you too. So I was just telling people, but I'm going to remind right now that we're having this wonderful opportunity to meet my friend, um, my workout buddy, and she is truly a warrior, uh, Jen, Jennifer Tipton. And she is a, she's a fitness instructor, personal trainer, yoga teacher. She owns her own yoga school. She's been teaching fitness and movement classes since 1998. And she is currently um, battling and in the middle of her battle with breast cancer. And being that it is October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we wanted to take this opportunity to really highlight Jen and to hear a little bit about her story. So people will be coming in and out, but we'll be posting this on our Instagram and also on the Cure Grace Yoga website so that people can learn more about you then. So hi, welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Long intro, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, you know, I just wanted to let people know how we know each other. Yeah. Um, we, we met, I don't know, online several years ago, Jen and I, and we actually come from the same yoga lineage that we have. One of our primary teachers is Shiva Ray, and that's how we met. But it's also the way we connected is that we both love the TRX and over time, we got to know each other a little bit better. And then last summer, we started to work out together every Friday morning, doing a live TRX class with Frazier. So it's just, that's how we got to know each other better. But I'm going to just sh shoot it over to you, Jen. Um, last December, you had some interesting stuff come up. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you had your breast cancer, um, how you discovered that you had it yeah for sure um so i had my first mammogram december 2019 everything was fine i have no family history of breast cancer so i went in december 2020 and it was you know i just went in and i was annoyed to be there and i was like i, I should be doing something else you know why you, like you Anyway, I went in and it was the longest mammogram ever. And then um, I went back and they did some ultrasounds. And then several hours later, um, someone came in and I could just tell by the look on his face. Mm. Um, and he said, there's we're, something very concerning and we're going to schedule a uh, biopsy tomorrow in three places. Um, oh, wow. including the lymph nodes. And I was like, he's like, do you have any questions? And I said, should I have any questions? You know, and this whole thing during COVID has been um, extra challenging. You know, you don't see anyone's face. So we're all masked and you have to go to the hospital by yourself. And it wasn't like the movies where, or the books where someone was there holding my hand. It was just kind of me sitting there going, okay, right. you know, like, right, oh, this is not happening to me right now. And so I wasn't too worried. Um, and then I went in the next day, and they biopsied three parts. And then I remember, the nurse goes, Oh, they just like to be extra sure, don't worry about anything. But there was kind of a look in her face. And I was like, you know, kind of looking for something. Yeah. And yeah. she just looked at me and I was like, this isn't good. So I waited and I waited and I got through the holidays. Um, and then three weeks later, I um, got a message on my app that I had breast cancer. Uh, yeah, I love that. That I mean, that it's so I remember when you got your initial biopsy and there was such a long wait, you know, it was wait, so just wait, wait, wait. It was during the Christmas and New Year's holidays, you know. Um, what was surprising to me as just an outsider, and it must have been just awful going through it yourself, was that you'd think if it was something serious that they'd be on it. But that wasn't the case at all. So what happened next? 
So I, I, I called my doctor and I said, can I talk to somebody? And she said, well, I'm busy all day. I'll call you later. So about 5.30 that evening, she gave me a call and she said, listen, I'm not a cancer doctor. I don't know, you know, what's going on. You need to talk to an oncologist. And I said, okay, how do I do that? But they acted fast. Um, okay. So I got in with like the best oncologist uh, the next right. week. And then, you know, I'm sitting there by myself, back against the wall, uh, masks on, and he sits down and he's like, so what you would have what we would call a stage three breast cancer. And I was like, mm. what? Like stage yeah. three. I mean, I was like last year I was fine. And I, I was, was fine. Three. Like, how does that even happen? Um, so the tumor was so big, I didn't even feel it. It was basically like my whole breast, 12 and a half wow. centimeters, which if you get out a roller, that's very large. So it's the whole thing kind of grew overnight. And I had another tumor and my lymph nodes. Um, and so I just sat there and I was like taking it all in. And then he left and I looked at the nurse and they were just standing there and they couldn't touch me or hug me because of COVID oh. and it was just awkward and I go okay now I'm gonna cry and she's like okay you go do that and then she like handed me a box of tissue and I was like I'm like from here now. I'm like narrating what's happening and trying oh. to process and it was just after that it's kind of a blur I was in chemo um the following week mm. Mm. and I just mm. I just hit the ground running thankfully yeah. Well, Jen, okay, so I know that there's got to have been a whole bunch of different emotions that came to you. Um, you're a very active person. And we talked a little bit about what your response was. Um, can you tell me what you were feeling other than, I know there was fear, but um, what was going through your mind? Because you don't have, you know, any history of breast cancer. You were doing the right things. Well, first of all, I said, how could this happen? And yeah. I, I kept asking that to everybody. They said, well, it's bad luck. Well, thank you. That's very comforting. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, first, I mean, everyone who gets diagnosed, the first thing, you know, well, not, I don't see for everyone, but one of the things that go, might go through one's mind is what, what, what did I do? How did this yeah. happen? What, what yeah. went wrong? And I just, I couldn't figure it out. Um, so they said, sometimes the cells just go crazy. And even my acupuncturist, and I was getting acupuncture every week in 2020. And she was like, how did this happen? Yeah. And I said, you tell me, I don't yeah. know, but it happened. Um, I almost didn't go in for my mammogram because we tend to travel around that December time. And, uh, but since, you know, COVID we weren't. So thankfully I went in, it saved my life. Yeah, I'm so grateful that you did that. So you, you jump right into chemotherapy. Um, you know, and I, I remember hearing, I, I would follow, Jen has this wonderful online blog and I was able to keep up on her treatment so you weren't being peppered with too many people saying, what's going on, what's going on? Um, that you went through chemotherapy by yourself. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I, I got what's called dose dense chemo, where they basically give you a, like a triple dose um, to make it go by faster. And that's for people who, you know, they check the heart to make sure that your heart can handle it. Um, and I just went in and I remember my nurse, um, she's a yoga teacher. And so we talked yoga and yoga pants and I was getting my infusion and I'm like, this isn't so bad, you know. <laughs> and then the next week, my hair fell out. I had like oh. long, long hair, you know, and uh, I was like, okay. So then I asked my husband just to shave it off. And mm. um, it was, it was lonely. He would uh, drop me off at the door and, and say goodbye. And I would go to my infusion for hours and hours. And it just, and then I would check in with my oncologist every two weeks. And so I went every two weeks for four months. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a lot of chemotherapy. It's a lot of Especially chemo. Especially if you're doing a triple dose. So what kind of resources were available for you while you were going through this? So when I say resources, like we know chemotherapy does, I mean, it's basically trying to kill the cells without killing you. So how did you get through it? You just put one foot in front of the other. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there, are, there's so much support out there. There are, I'm in like five support groups. Um, <laughs> and I joined a, a local group, um, with hundreds and uh, close to over 600 women under the wow. age of 45 who have breast cancer in my area. And it was really helpful because you see people like you, you know, who they just, you just don't think it's going to happen to you. And just talking about it and going to meetings on zoom and just seeing people who have been through it mm-hmm. and it were on the other side. And I thought, right. okay, eventually that's going to be me. Yeah. You know, everything's temporary. And so just one day at a time, like literally right. just one day at a time. Well, you have a really rich yoga practice. Um, and I'm wondering how you're being a yoga teacher and practitioner, how did that help you during the treatment? I can't imagine going through this without having my practice. Mm. Um, simple things like breathing because it's hard to breathe. So some days, you know, I was just lying there and I was just telling myself to breathe. And I went back to everything I've learned about being calm. And even though my heart was beating really fast from the chemo, um, I was able to relax and breathe. Uh, Gentle movement, gentle spinal twists, um, just simple things to open up Mm -hmm. the chest. And, you know, also, and I'm sure we'll get there, but also my community was just so incredibly supportive. But just listening to my body, resting when I needed to, And then the days I felt good, I would walk, I would practice more yoga, I would do other things, um, lift light weights when I felt up to it, because it really did help um, with my energy levels. And so everything about, you know, listening to your body and being present. I love that. Well, let's talk about your community. Let's talk about that yoga community and how that helped you. Oh, my goodness. So, um, well, everyone, thank you so much for your support. It's yes. been unbelievable. Um, so I contacted Shiva right after I was diagnosed, and, and she said, why don't you join our Yogini Circle on Mondays? And I was like, okay, you know, I'll do that. And um, it turned out that my chemo was on Tuesdays. So I was always well enough to join the practice on Monday. And just messaging all the women in the group and getting support and showing up, you know, with my headscarf on and, and just connecting with people. It was amazing. Um, It really kept me in a routine. Mm -hmm. Um, Along with that, I have all my students and they'd be like, how are you feeling? Can you teach? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not a cancer patient. I'm still your yoga teacher. And it felt really good. Um, And then just all my, you know, all my yoga friends who would just contact me and it wasn't about cancer. It was about like, Hey Jen, what pose does this? Or, you know, just little things that people always ask. And it made me feel uh, like myself. I love that. And you said something that's so powerful. You said that I'm not, you know, you were not your cancer, you know, cancer is something that's happening to you. And it must have been so, um, well, it just kept you in that realm of feeling like yourself to, you know, like you were just talking about, like that people would talk to you as Jennifer, and not as like, Oh, and and how are you even though it's, you know, when you need help, it's so good to have the help. You were saying, um, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, And you even mentioned this in the blog that Shiva referred to um, chemotherapy. She referred to it in a special way that I thought was really interesting and unique. Will you share that with us? Absolutely. So she went through chemo and she referred to it as this healing nectar. Um, And so many of us with breast cancer, we have this, the most powerful chemo drug ever invented and it's red and we call it the red devil. Mm. And it's, 
it's awful. I mean, it just causes all kinds of side effects. Um, it burned my insides so badly wow. and you just, everyone has a different effect, right? There's so many things that can happen. But uh, as I was watching the red liquid go into my body, um, I would visualize that healing nectar. Mm. And it was going in and killing the cancer. I had a port, um, which is something that is inserted right into the chest near the heart. Mm -hmm. So that was going wow. right into my chest. And when the nurses administer that, they put on like a hazmat suit, like full on because if it's it very your, comforting, it's very comforting. <laughs> if it touches your skin, it will burn your skin. Wow. And I looked at it and it had like a skull and crossbones. And I remember um, my, my yoga teacher and nurse, I go, she goes, don't look at it, Jen, just don't look at it. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Um, oh, but man. Otherwise, it's just so scary. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, when I would check in every two weeks, the tumor was getting smaller and smaller. Mm. And so it made it easier to get to the next round because I right. knew it was working. For me, it was working. <sighs> Yeah. Thank goodness. Yes. Thank goodness. So what was your experience like with your family? I know that um, you have a young daughter and um, I would think that would be very difficult for the family, especially for children to see their mother. Um, and, and with your long, beautiful hair, she had hair that was mid back, very long, dark, gorgeous hair. Um, it's kind of a symbol, you know? Um, so how, what was her response as you were going through these things? So she's six and she's very observant, a uh, little girl. She's, you know, so for her, it became very real when my hair started to fall out and we talked about it and I bought every book I could about cancer for children. Um, I contacted a social worker. She got a coloring book and she did a lot of art to express mm -hmm. her feelings. And, um, my husband and I, you know, I'm like, just shave it off, you know? Yeah. And I really, I wasn't worried about losing my hair. There's ways to save your hair. If you'd like, mm -hmm. you can like do a, like a cold cap. But I said, I don't want one more thing to stress out about. It's just hair and it, it'll come back. Yeah. You know, but for her, <laughs> when that, he started like shaving my head, um, she ran into her room and went into child's pose. Oh, wow. And we're like, oh, oh, this is really powerful. This is, you know, mm -hmm. really affecting her. So we talked about it and, and, and she went to therapy and talked about it and what that meant. And we bought a book called uh, Nowhere Hair and Where Does Mama's Hair Go? You know, yes. and I said, it'll come back, it'll come back. And so um, I involved her in the process. So we bought the pink wig together. Cute. And um, she's like, Mama, get purple and green and blue. And I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah and then once th it started to grow back I was like look it's growing back I told you I told you I'd be fine and so she's super excited and she loves watching my hair grow back <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's cute it's like a cute sassy hairdo oh, thanks <laughs> I also really like the wigs um we've got a photo of her that's on the blog that Kira Grace sent out this morning where she's got a cute pink wig on it's a very hot look so <laughs> I think keep the wig so that you can use it in the future, just whenever, whenever you want to feel sassy, right? It's a good reminder of like, I beat this because I believe you are going to beat this. So where are you at right now? So right now I'm in radiation. Um, mm -hmm. That's the last phase of treatment. I uh, had a lumpectomy in June to remove the tumor. And then I'll just share with everyone. I decided to just, have a double mastectomy with full reconstruction and just go for it. So I did that in August. Mm -hmm. um, so once I healed from that, they started the radiation. I had radiation number seven this morning wow. and I have 25 total. You had it right before this, haven't you? It seems like, you know, um, when we were talking that Jen told me, she said, well, I might be in the car on the way back from radiation, but you got here for us. <laughs> I am here. I actually went to work out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, 
<laughs> and you're, and the thing is you're healing so much more quickly than they expected. Um, what do you attribute that to? That's a leading question. Well, I think uh, physical fitness is key, and mm -hmm. I would love to see more studies and more research on how exercise really affects treatment. I noticed that the weeks where I was doing more exercise, any kind of exercise, my tumors were shrinking more. Oh, that's and so cool. I, yeah, and I documented it, and um, it's a real thing. So I, they tell you to exercise, but it's really, really important to do that. And especially, um, I'm, I just started radiation. I can't speak to how I'll feel at the end, yeah. but for now I feel great. And they said, if you get tired, just be active. And I said, isn't okay. that interesting? If you're tired, be active because yeah. most people, they get tired. It's like, I just want to lay on the couch and, and, um, binge Netflix or something, you know? Right. Right. And so I said, okay, I can do that. You know, that's one thing that I can do um, that I can control. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I think that's what it's really about. It's like, what can you control? You know, um, because you, it's not like you had any control of this thing coming into you and attacking you. And I think it's important for people to understand that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. And that's why you know, we, we have to do the things we have to check. Can you, let's talk about that for a minute. Will you give us maybe some tips or some things that you would, you know, in retrospect, tell people that they need to do um, as far as to, for breast cancer, like keep an eye out. What's number what's one, the takeaway? Sign up for early mammograms if you can. Um, I'm hearing about more and more women now that I'm in it, more and more women who are diagnosed really at a young age. Um, so that's the best way is to get your mammogram. And then of course, know your body. It's interesting because I would say, do your self checks. I really didn't know what to check for. Uh huh. I mean, you they know. just say look for lumps and stuff, but you said that your, your breast felt like just like a breast. It just felt like kind of, yeah, it was just the whole thing was a tumor, you yeah. know, and I just didn't notice it growing because it happened so fast. And yeah. as we know, 2020 was a crazy year. Mm -hmm. um, and my appointment actually got pushed a little bit. My um, in-person appointment was a video visit over the summer. And I, I can't think about that, you know, but yeah. I was thinking, well, what if I was examined in person? Right. Um, but I'm fine. And, you know, I can't, I can't go back and, and think of the what ifs. Um, but yeah, just, if anything feels off, get it checked out. Right you now, listen to your body. I knew something was wrong. Before I, you went in? Uh huh. Uh, wow. Like last October, I felt, I didn't know what it was. I just felt off. And I talked mm -hmm. to my doctor. I said, I think my hormones are being weird. I, I don't know why I, they sure were. <laughs> they were, they were, you know, trying to kill me. So I yes. went in for blood tests yeah. and they said, Oh, your blood tests look great. But I was growing okay. uh, an estrogen positive breast cancer the whole time. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the estrogen is what it's feeding off of? Is that what it means? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of the most common types of breast cancer. Um, it, and it feeds off, off of estrogen in the body. And uh, yeah, my tumors were very hungry. Like, oh, man, they, they got big really fast. Yeah. I remember it seems like it doubled between Christmas and when you actually started your treatment. It doubled mm -hmm. in size. It doubled in size. Yep, it grew fast. And when I say it grew overnight, it really grew super fast within a couple months. It's unbelievable. Wow. Well, let me ask you, you really are a warrior. And, you know, there's this term where we hear, and this is Warrior Wednesday. And typically we have one of Kira Grace's warrior ambassadors on, but we felt like, you know, you are truly a warrior and you hear the word warrior associated with breast cancer a lot. What does that mean to you now? And how is it different from maybe a year ago? Yeah, you know, I always heard that word and I thought, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's great. But then when you're really in it, 
Mm. Um, it's a fight. <laughs> it's a fight every day just to get up and walk mm -hmm. down the hall without mm -hmm. being too tired to walk down the hall. Um, yeah. Just to like be a mom, mm -hmm. um, a wife, you know, and just everything. It's, it's a fight. It's a fight just to uh, stay positive. And mm -hmm. it's okay to uh, lie there and just, you know, rest and, and do what you have to do. And it's also a fight to be able to just lie there and rest because there's so much to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right uh, so the whole thing's a fight uh, physically mentally emotionally you just have to not let yourself get to that dark place and know that it's temporary everything's temporary and you will get through it and that's one thing with all these women and I'm not unique Lisa there's so many of us yeah there's so many of us going through this Mm -hmm. um, I hear about just 600 women day. under 45 yeah. that were in your, just in, in my the area, area group. Mm -hmm. that are in and that's just group. the ones in the group. Yeah. Right. Right. Those are the ones who actually found the group and joined it. And, um, there's so many of us and you get through it, you know, you just do it. You just put one foot in front of the other and you just do it. Right. I love that too. Um, what are some recommendations then now that you have this perspective and you've gone through it and you've faced death, you know, what advice would you give to people in general? And this goes beyond those who may have cancer. So I, I used to hear, you know, when you get a diagnosis or when you get sick, you really think about your life. And, you know, I had the flu once in 2008, like being sick is not something that, I'm good at. I just, right. you know, I'm used to feeling great and healthy. And so this was huge, um, very humbling and just a huge thing to happen to me. And I thought about my life. Mm -hmm. And because when you're waiting, when you have stage three, and basically you're waiting for those body scans to come back to see if the cancer has spread to the brain, to the lungs to the bones. And those are the common places that breast cancer spreads. Mm -hmm. um, you think, what if, because yeah. you're waiting to find out, you know, and it takes a few days. Um, so you just start to think about your life. And I thought to myself, have I lived the life that I want? Mm. And, you know, I was like, yeah, and I've always kind of been like that. I've always traveled a lot and surrounded myself with good people. And I picked a career that I love. And it's so important because you just, you just never know. Mm -hmm. You just never know. It's true. And so just really, really think about it. And um, it's scary to be in that space. I hope, you know, you never have to, but it's just, you just think Me about too. stuff. Yeah. Me too. So it's basically just, you know, live your, don't wait to live your life. I mean, you want to plan for the future, but that live the life you want to have and yeah. um, maybe focus on the relationships that are important to you. Right. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I, uh, I call people more instead of texting. I like to hear people's voices I spend time with people, you know, who I really enjoy their company because there was a time when I was like, how do I want to spend my time? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, when I'm with my daughter, I'm really present mm. because that time is so precious. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, so what is next for you? I know that you're still in this battle, but I'm, I'm quite confident and hopeful that you'll be in remission soon. Is that too far ahead to be asking what's next and what you're planning for? Cause I, I think I know something you've got up your sleeve. 
Oh, I'm always thinking about what's next. <laughs> I, um, I have a lot of plans. I'm launching a business here in the Bay yeah. Area. And yeah, I'm opening um, Cycle Bar San Mateo. And it's at the Hillsdale Shopping Center. If anyone's local, come check us out. Sweet. And I'm super excited. Um, part of uh, what we do is we donate, we have a Cycle Gives program and we donate classes and um, all the proceeds go to a good cause. So I'm really looking forward to giving back to all these wonderful organizations who've helped me. I'm also um, hosting a walk on November 7th. That's a Sunday at 9 a.m. And you're welcome mm -hmm. just to walk virtually or come out and walk with us. And all uh -huh. the proceeds go to City of Hope. Oh, I was going to ask if there was yeah. an organization that you would like us to um, donate to. That's great. If you could maybe give us that information and we can post it in the comment section when I post this on our, uh, our IGTV. And City of Hope, I didn't just pick an organization. They have been with me all year mm -hmm. and including through diagnosis and give me all my second opinions. Oh. And they have spent a lot of time with me. I'm talking like 45 minutes to an hour with a surgeon, with an oncologist, radiologist. That's huge. And just answering mm -hmm. my questions and just being there for me, checking on me. It's such a, I mean, just the support's amazing. So I really want to give back to um, City of Hope. What an incredible organization. I didn't know enough about it. So I think that we'll definitely look it up. We'll get that information. We'll get it out to all of you. But um, is there anything else you would like to share with us, Jen? I, you know, I just check your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, check them. The takeaway from today is I know it's scary to go in there and it's annoying and you don't want to go to the hospital, but please get your mammogram. Mm -hmm. um, I almost didn't do it. And I just, I can't even think about the what ifs. And, you know, only five to 10% of breast cancer cases are hereditary. That's it. That's, That's crazy. It. It's, it's, yeah. It can happen to anybody. It happened to me. You know, I'm a vegetarian. I work out all the time. I'm a yoga teacher. I meditate. I do all the things. Um, and I got stage three. And it's, it's just, it happened to me. And just get it yourself checked out just for peace right. of mind. And men should also, you know, check themselves. Like men don't go in and have mammograms. But men do also get breast cancer. It's they not do. as common, but it does happen. I have personally known um, men who have had breast cancer. So this affects everybody, not just women. So make sure that you at least know your body. You know, keep an eye out. If something is different, that's something to pay attention to. So um, for everybody, that check your boobs, as she says, isn't just for the ladies. It's for everyone. You should everyone. just do that. And, you know, support those who are going through it. So she's experienced positivity from her community. And I would just say as somebody that um, hopefully never gets breast cancer, um, just knowing about this and knowing how much of a positive impact it has made for my friends, um, I want to be more involved in the community and help anyone who might need that. So, um, Jen, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. We're all going to be rooting for you, paying attention to you. I want to invite people to follow Get Zen Jen. She also has another, uh, another place that's for her, her personal training. I don't know, Jen, if you want to just shout that out now. or I have, I have way too many IG accounts, but that one is Jen the Trainer. Um, but yeah, yeah, get in touch. Mes message me if you're going through this right now. Uh, stay strong and you'll get through it. Yes. And I see here that Soul Body Works, she, she said, have you heard of turkey tail mushrooms? Yes. I have. And, mm -hmm. and I asked the same question to my oncologist. Now, the chemo that I did the first time is actually made of mushrooms. Interesting. Uh-huh. And the other one's made of tree bark. So you don't want to be taking anything without talking to your oncologist uh, because it can interfere with the chemo. Now, my acupuncturist is really into mushrooms. And so she gave me some herbs for later on that mm -hmm. can help with that. So do your research. But yes, I have heard of them. There's one um, that's good for 
estrogen positive and there's one that's not so good. So okay. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but make sure to do your research. Are there any other questions since, you know, we have a couple of minutes. Um, anyone want to ask Jen anything? So when you do tree pose, you were now literally part tree. <laughs> <laughs> what a great <laughs> comment. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Angela. Hello. <laughs> She's a more grounded now than ever. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Anyone else have a question you'd like to ask Jen? Questions and comments? Uh, we're just so glad to have you. And thank you. It was kind of the last minute that she was willing to step in. But please, I would love to invite all of you. I am doing it, but I would love for you to go and read Jen's blog. It's so wonderful. She's so real and honest and authentic. That's just something I love about her. So it's on the Kira Grace website. Um, go under community and click blog. And she is highlighted for this month. And, um, and Jen, I guess I'm going to see you in Fraser's TRX class. Mm -hmm. I can't yep. even tell you. It's, I'm so much more motivated. She's my workout buddy. And, you know, I got to say that I actually haven't been to that early morning class since you've been in treatment. So I'm coming back now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Well, thank you. I hope you have a great day. You too. Thanks again. Thanks, Lisa. See you soon. Bye-bye.